Hello friends. Welcome back to my channel Instrument Calibration. If you are new on this channel, and if you have missed our previous videos, you can find links in the description box. In this video, I'm going to show 7 easy steps to adjust zero and span of this Fisher 3582 pneumatic positioner. In other words, I'm going to explain calibration procedure of this positioner. So, please watch this video till the end to learn everything about calibration of this positioner. First of all, let's learn, what we need in calibration kit to calibrate this positioner. Firstly, we need milliampere source to give 4 to 20 milliampere to positioner. Secondly, we need milliampere to pressure converter. This converter converts 4 to 20 milliampere output into 3 to 15 pounds per square inch signal. And lastly, we need positioner. Before I go to first step of calibration, I want to explain about parts which we need to adjust for zero and span adjustment. As you can see, zero adjustment is done by rotating this nozzle. And span adjustment is done by moving this flapping assembly. In order to move this flapping assembly, this screw need to loosen up. Now, let's go to first step. First of all, set air supply pressure to some specific value. In this example, I have set air supply pressure to 20 pounds per square inch. Now, move flapper assembly towards direct side of this summing beam, and put flapper assembly to mid-range of this summing beam. In this case, put flapper assembly at 6. In a second step, give 4 mA signal to mA to pressure converter. This converter give 3 pounds per square inch input signal to positioner. You can see the input pressure on input port of positioner. Now, observe positioner output port. If output port dial indication is above 0 pounds per square inch when input pressure is 3 pounds per square inch, then rotate nozzle to adjust output pressure, and make it to 0 pounds per square inch. In other words, when input pressure is 3 pounds per square inch, you need to adjust nozzle until output pressure becomes 0 pounds per square inch. In this case, if control valve is air to close, then it will remain full open. Step 4 is to slowly increase input pressure, and watch output pressure gauge. As soon as output pressure gauge needle moves, stop the input pressure, and look into input pressure gauge. Ideally, input pressure gauge needle should be between 3 and 3.5 pounds per square inch. This technique ensure that, when input pressure is 3 pounds per square inch, the positioner output pressure is saturated to 0 pounds per square inch. In step 5, we increase the input pressure, and watching the output pressure at output pressure gauge. In this step, we will check output saturation point at other end of the stroke. Saturation means, when output pressure rapidly changes, and goes all the way to supply pressure. In this example, it is 20 pounds per square inch. Our aim is to make output pressure saturates just before input pressure. In this example, it is between 14.5 to 15 pounds per square inch. For example, if we increase the input pressure, and output saturates too soon or before 14.5 pounds per square inch, we need to move the flapper assembly to smaller number. And if output pressure saturates too late, or after 15 pounds per square inch, then we need to move the flapper assembly to larger number. Every time when you move flapper assembly, you need to reset zero adjustment. In order to readjust zero, increase the input pressure to 3 pounds per square inch, and adjust output pressure to 0 pounds per square inch by rotating nozzle. After zero adjustment, check the span again. When Fisher 3582 valve is fully calibrated, we can be sure that, when input signal is 3 to 15 psi, control valve is either fully open or fully closed. Once you are done with zero and span adjustment, don't forget to tighten up zero and span adjustment screw. 
This is also essential step. If you forget to tighten up zero and span adjustment screw after calibration, your zero and span adjustment may disturb. So, in this video, I have given 7 easy steps to calibrate Fisher 3582 control valve. Thank you friends for watching this video. I hope you like this video. And if you think this video is informative for you and others, then please share this video with your friends. And please subscribe this channel and press bell icon to get notification, when we post next video on the channel. And if you have any questions about this video, please feel free to ask me in comment box. I will try to give best possible answers to your questions.